Good morning, everybody. It's Joan again from the office. Welcome to worship, whether you're online or whether you're in person, we're glad you're here. We've got some things coming up that I want to tell you about. The first is VBS. It will be June 19th through the 23rd in the evening or during the day. During the day is going to be on Zoom at 10 a.m. In the evening, it's going to be 630. So there are options. So what can you do? The first thing you can do is register. We need kids to come out. It's gonna be a fun-filled evening, so we want as many kids here as we can get. What else can you do? You can pray. If you can't be here, pray. Pray for the volunteers, pray for the kids, pray for the event. Then you can serve. We need volunteers to come and serve. Mark 10, 45 tells us that Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. So let's come out and serve these kids. Then you can invite, ask kids that may not come to Spring Hill to come. They're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be a fun field week. The next event is Father's Day, is June 18th. So we want you to be here. There will be gifts given for every, every father in the room. If you can't be here, text DAD, D-A-D, to 434-423-5300, and a gift will be sent to you. So you're gonna get a gift whether you're here or not but we really would like you to be here. Last but not least, be sure to check out our website to get any information on any event coming up on our events page. So anything that I've forgotten or neglected to mention from above, you will find there. So have a good week, be blessed. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today in worship in person and online. Uh, my name is Katie Bond and I'm a member here at Spring Hill. We want you to know that you're important to God and those of you here and those of you online. For those of you in person, we hope someone said hello to you today and if we didn't say hello to you, um, we can be sure to say hello before you leave. Um, those of you who are joining, joining us online, hello is just important. Be sure to say hello in the comments. Our online host will respond and welcome you again. We would love to get connected with you. The easiest way to do that is co texting CONNECT to 434-423-5300. Anyone online or in person can connect with us through our text line 434-432-5300 or message us anytime through our website. You can also use our QR code, our one-stop shop, for more information. Part of worshiping is recognizing God's provision for us and giving back to God. This can be praying for ministries and each other, volunteering and serving here at Spring Hill, and also by giving financially. There are several ways you can give financially at Spring Hill. First way is by using one of our offering boxes located here in the sanctuary. Mail or come by the office here at Spring Hill. You can also use our website. You can also give by texting GIVE to 434-432-5300. When you give, you're helping Spring Hill reach our neighbors where they are to share the good news of Christ with compassion for the lost and needy. Your prayers, giving, and serving allows Spring Hill to help many people. Again, thank you for joining us today in worship. Would you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for getting all of us here safely and for those of you online, too. Um, we hope we can focus on your word today. and. Please guide us through the rest of our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Katie. If you stand, if, if you can at this time, we'll begin our time of worship with some singing. Again, thank you for being here this morning.
Good morning, Spring Hill. My name is Tina Andrews, and I'm here for Telling the Story. At Spring Hill, Telling the Story is our way to share God's Word a little bit differently. And our message this morning is especially for our graduates. But I think it applies to everyone, from the biggest of us to the smallest. When I was growing up, my dad would give a copy of a book to each one of his kids when we graduated from high school. The name of the book was As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And the truth is, you could sum up that whole book in one sentence. The way you think will determine who you are. That's not an idea that Mr. Allen came up with. That thought goes all the way back to a, another book that should be very important in everyone's life. So I want to leave you with thoughts from the Bible about how what you think determines who you are. The first one is from Philippians. It's a letter to a church where they're being told that whatever is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and praiseworthy, those are the things to think about. And I don't think that it's un usual that that message would be being sent because we know that all good things come from God. So if you're keeping your mind focused on what's true and good and pure and praiseworthy, you're keeping your mind focused on God. The other thing I wanted to remind you of from the Bible is Matthew chapter 5, 21 and 22. Jesus was teaching on the mountain and the part of that teaching that's most famous is the Beatitudes. It's when he says to everybody, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, right? But the other part of that teaching, he starts talking about the Jewish law, the commandments that God has given us in the Bible. Because Jesus knows, he was reminding us, he was pressing home the point that what you think about drives what you choose to do, and the choices you make determine who you are. We are not stuck being someone we don't like. There is always time and always a chance to turn to God and say, fill me up with you. Help guide my choices. Set my feet on the path you would have them on. That's a decision you can make. Fill your mind up with what is true and good and worthy. Make the choices that you would be proud to stand in front of the Lord and claim. And you will be a person that you are proud to be. So my assignment for you this week is to notice what you're thinking. Notice your thoughts and really examine them. Are they driving you to make the kind of decisions you want to make? Are they moving you toward the kind of person that you want to be? Because as a man thinketh, so he is. Stand again if you can and continue our time of worship and song.
Hey you guys, this is Scott Burks, and I am so excited. I'm excited about what's going on at Spring Hill. I'm excited about what's going on in the life of the graduates. You know, I'm just excited about where things are and what's happening. And today I get to share just a brief little thing with you and specifically about our graduates. What an exciting time it is to graduate from high school. You know, for me, high school was a good experience. It, it actually was the best seven years of my entire life. <laughs> no, seriously, I did make it out in four, but it was awesome. And I look back and so many things happened for me when I was in high school. It was when I became a Christian. It was when I got saved. It was when I got my call to ministry. It was, there was so many things that happened that during that time. And so today, as we honor graduates, as we think about high school, and as we think about graduation, not only with high school students, but with college students and uh, people that are finishing school and accomplishing big things. When we think about these accomplishments, it's a blast to think about them, but we can't live in our past. God continues to call us to something next. God continues to say, listen, that was great, but now it's time to move to something else. You know, throughout all of the Bible, he's done this. He did it with Moses. He did it with Abraham. You know, God continued to call people to do what was next. And so graduates, as you face what's next, let me give you some things that you can know for sure. All right, first is God is in your future. God is in your future. God is outside of time. God doesn't exist in time. Time for us is one thing. Time doesn't exist for God. So God is there. He is waiting. He's in your future. That's one thing. That's a massive thing. The second is God has plans for you. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. God says he has plans for our future. You know, so you can trust that God is there. You can trust that he is going to be with you and take care of you. So that's one big thing. The second big thing is that he will never leave you or forsake you. All right, one of our graduates, Nathan, I remember specifically when you became a Christian. And it was so fun to baptize you and to be there when that happened. And so, you know, with, with those of you who are followers of Jesus, you can know this. That he is in your future. He has plans for your future. And he will never, ever leave you. I love it. In John 3 16 when he says I come to give you life I came to give you eternal life God says in John chapter 10 he comes to give you abundant life in Jer in Matthew 28 he promises us that he will never leave us or forsake us and so graduates you know this is an exciting time to be alive do not let anybody tell you it's not don't even think twice about people who are pouring negativity into your life God is in your future. He's got plans for your life. He will never leave you or forsake you. And this is an awesome time to be a graduate. So, so exciting. You guys have fun. Y'all enjoy. Have a great time of worship today. Spring Hill, you're an amazing church. And I can't wait to be back with you again very, very soon. I think like maybe next weekend. <laughs> this is going to be great. Love you guys so much. All right, uh, I'm going to tell a quick story on Scott Burks, who you just saw. We were at First Baptist Church, Wichita Falls, when we graduated from Hershey High School. There were three major high schools in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, Old High, which was the original high school, so some people called it Wichita Falls High, but Old High is what we knew it as. And then Ryder High School, those were like in the nicer part of town, okay? Uh, Scott and I went to Hershey High School, where the blue-collar people lived. And uh, he and I were the only two graduating seniors from Hershey High School that were a part of the youth group in um, First Baptist Church, Wichita Falls. And so at that time, we, we wore our cap and gown, and they had us, you know, come up and receive some gifts and stuff. And this was a large church, about 2,300 on Sunday mornings, uh, great atmosphere, on, the, on TV, all right, we, we would... We would watch the service later on just to see if we would happen to be on TV, and that was, our, that was the claim to fame. Well, the, the Sunday morning that we were being recognized, Scott and I had stayed out all night with our senior class having fun, like the sponsored senior class kind of thing. Well, we just happened to go a little longer than what it officially went, okay? 
and we had a great time. So we're there, Scott Burks. We're on the, like the front three rows of this massive auditorium, massive sanctuary. Uh, the old high has on their black. Ryder High School had it on their like gold. Hershey High School has on this kind of like, light royal blue. We stand out like sore thumbs. Burks falls asleep during the whole sermon, okay? And I'm like, bam, Scott, we're on TV. <laughs> Good stuff. So can we give a round of applause to parents and students again for graduating from high school and from college? We are in a series entitled Victorious Living. Graduating from high school is a is a chance to celebrate a, a victory. Graduating from college, a two-year or four-year degree, or going to a trade school and being trained in that. Uh, my family lived in the city of Chesapeake, the Hampton Roads area, for a long time, and many young men and women would go over to the shipyard, and they would be in a two-year trade training while they're earning an income, and then they would get that training and earn even a better income and have a good future ahead of them. They, they had made a good choice. Uh, so victory, we like that word, and we like life, all right? Um, today's message is entitled 3D, living in 3D, and it is this. This is the only thing I really hope that you walk away with today. We're going to look at the Word of God, but this is straight out of the Word of God. Our, our decisions determine our destiny. Uh, you'll, you'll see Hollywood movies and, Luke, this is your destiny. No, no, you have to, you have to decide. That, that's your destiny. As you and I make decisions, that becomes our destiny. Our decisions today become our future tomorrow. Our decisions and choices that we make today become memories and stories that we want to tell or memories and stories that we want to hide. And so decisions are very, very important in life. Decisions. Um... Today, just today, according to Psychology Today and some other sociological magazines, you and I will make 35,000 choices today. I want that to sink in. As adults, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, consciously, subconsciously, 35,000 thousand decisions. That's a decision every two seconds. Then you multiply that times like preteen up to like 75 years old. That's many decisions. So can we just nod our head and know that decisions are vital. They're vital. They're very, very important in life. Um, so as we walk through this today, decisions determine our destiny. We're going to look at two passages. You can go to your YouVersion app right now, and the passages will be listed there. You can go to your phone and just put this in the search engine that you prefer. The first passage is Deuteronomy chapter 31, 15 and following. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 15 and following. And so our decisions determine our destiny. So Deuteronomy chapter 31, 15 through 20, here's the setting. God has called these people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. He's called these people out. He's about to take them into this wonderful, beautiful future that he desires for them so that they can be a witness so that they can tell the story of God and how glorious he is, how much he cares for people, how he overcomes difficulties. Um, speaking of difficulties, the students that you saw from graduate from high school and from college and law school, you know, many of them had to walk through the pandemic when they were at the height of their life, when things were supposed to be glorious they were separated from their peers. Uh, they, they had to make choices about what courses to take and what that might look like for them. You and I have to do the same. 
we may think we're in the glory days of retirement or the, the glory days of the empty nesting or the glory days of enjoying grandchildren or the, the height of your career and something will come your way and you have to make a decision about it. You have to make a decision about it. Well, these people, God is saying, look, I'm going to give this to you and here's what I want you to choose. And here it is. Deuteronomy 31, God makes this very clear. People will say, well, I have trouble understanding God's word. I have great news for you today. You will understand this word. Deuteronomy chapter 31, 15 and following. God speaking through one of his agents, one of his ambassadors to the people. You see, I have set before you today life and prosperity, and death, and adversity. He said, look, I'm putting it before you. You can decide on life, you can choose on life, or you can choose on death and adversity. That's verse 15, verse 16. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, so that you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But, however, yet, if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but you are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, you shall surely perish. So he's giving them a forewarning. If you'll go by this playbook, you will win. You will be victorious. You will choose life. However, if you decide to go your own way, if you decide to have some idols and worship the gods of the other people that are in your subdivision, the other people that are in the cubicle next to you, family members who are doing better than you financially, if you choose to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and and, and go with them. You're going to suffer. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death. I'm going to stop right there. I call all the stars. I'm calling the complete universe before you, God is telling the people and us today, that I... The Lord God Almighty is saying, I have set this before you, life or death. Our decisions determine our destiny. Last week, we talked about the battles that we're going to be in and that we are in a battle all the time. But it's not just a battle for your marriage or your finances or your teenager or your future. It is a battle for your soul. And life and death are issues of the soul, issues of, that go down, down deep. And God wants you to experience life as a young, single person. God desires children to experience life. Jesus himself blessed children when they were running around. God desires uh, college students who are Graduating out of law school, which, by the way, that's a huge feat, okay? He desires that they experience life in their career. Young singles, young married, married 25 years, 50 years, 70 years. I mean, it, God desires life. If anyone tells you, those of you who are in high school, college, middle school, going into the career world, if anyone tells you anything other than the God of Christianity desires that you live in life because he's a life-giving God, they are telling a lie. They're just telling a flat-out lie. And Satan, the dark side, the evil side, the death side, is the prince of lies. We like truth, we like life, and, we, and God desires that for us. So our decisions determine 
our destiny. So in this congregation, we're going to encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. As in this congregation, we're, we're going to encourage you that there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it is the way of death. That's a Proverbs. Do not turn to the right and do not turn to the left, but look straight ahead. That's another Proverbs, the book of wisdom. Look straight ahead. All right? And so our decisions determine our destiny. Here's some big decisions that sociologists and psychologists and philosophers think that we're making. And actually a poll was done by numerous groups. And here they are. So I just kind of want you to whisper them to one another before I call them out. And I'm going to call them out in order. All right? This is like a thousand people in different groups, polled, phone calls made. Hey, what do you think are like the nine big decisions? Well, I'm going to give you the five. So right now you whisper to yourself or as adults, and what do you think, what do you think the number one big decision that people in America, what's the number one big decision that people in America said, hey, here's the number one. What do you think it is? Kind of whisper it around one another. Career. Career. And I just want to tell you that's a big decision, but that should tell us something about how hard our hearts are in America. All right? That's a critique of the people that were polled who represent us. You need to choose a good career. You need to make all the money you can. Scott Burke's a friend of mine that you saw up there as he's counseling young people who are sensing a call to ministry and then they're trying to determine where to go. Well, do I go to this church or do I go to this church or do I go to this camp or what should I do? How, and, and that's a real struggle for young ministers as they're trying to walk through this. Should I go to this seminary or this seminary? Uh, Scott and I joke and he'll tell them as they're, as they're all frustrated and he'll say, look, man, uh, who's paying you the most? And they kind of look. And he's like, go there. Because God is everywhere, but go where the money is. And then it kind of lightens the load. It lightens the load of them trying to decide. And so career is important, but that is not number one. Number two, what do you think it is? We hear it over and over again. I've heard it, I know for 39 years of ministry that if we do this, our problems will be solved. Education. If we'll educate you, our problems will be solved. If we'll tell you that vaping is bad, you won't vape. Bull. If we tell you that these decisions that you're making are harmful, that you will no longer make those decisions. Bull. If we tell you that if you drink and drive, you're probably going to be in an accident and injure yourself or somebody else or even take a life, you will no longer drink and drive. Would you say the word for me? Bull. Bull. I'm all for education. Barely made it out of high school. I went to college like 30 days before it started and begged to get my way in a little state school. When I sensed a call to ministry and they told me that I needed to some guys told me, you're going to need to get your master's. I was like, oh my God, I hate school. Why are you doing this to me, God? But I did it. Because it's, it's a part of the call. Learning's a good thing. Reading's a good thing. But that's not going to solve all the problems. Number three, now we're going to get serious. Number three on the list, family. Close, all right? But those of you who have any wisdom, which there's a lot of wisdom in this room, we know, we know that who you end up marrying and planning on spending 70 years with, my aunt and uncle in Odessa, Texas, just celebrated 70 years of marriage, all right? And I'm like, what did y'all get married when you were 12? He's like, well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> that's old school, okay? We know that's an important decision. We know family is vital. Even if you don't like them, they're vital. You know it's true. They're vital. 
The family unit is created by God. If anyone tries to tell you anything other than that, that the Christian God created the family unit, they're wrong. They're just wrong. You can track it back, and it's vital. Now then, that begs the question, well, do you mean like the blended family, the broken family, the divorced family? Every family is blended. Whether it's your first marriage, second marriage, third marriage, whether you're single the rest of your life, you live in a blended family. When a young couple gets married, and they have the first child. They are blended times three. And about nine months into it, they will no longer be celebrating. When that little one is teething, they will be looking at one another, why did I marry you? Why did we have this kid? I'm going to work. And the other spouse will say, it's only 3 a.m. I don't care. I'm going to work. I mean, and you're like, how do you know that, Pastor? I have videos everywhere in your house. <laughs> We're human beings. That's how we know that stuff. But the family is vital. That's not number three. It's like number one. Finances is number four. And then relationships are number five. God created us to be in relationship with him and with one another. Those of us who are Christians... When you receive a phone call in the next couple of years from this group that is doing this survey, would you please let them know that decisions about relationship are number one, and decisions about family are number two, and the decisions about anything else is anything else. Where should I go to college? I don't know. Uh, what should I do after high school? I don't know. We look at these high school students who graduate and we say, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, adults, quit asking high school students who are graduating from high school that question. You're 65 years old, and you don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> and we're asking an 18-year-old who had to walk through the pandemic, 50% of them come from homes that are divorced, then another 20% come from a home that went through a divorce, and then a second divorce? They don't, they don't know what gender they are. And you think, well, no, these are solid Christian students. No, in today's world, if I come out and tell you I'm a male, I'm going to be mocked. That's just how it is. And, so, and then we ask them, well, uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? <laughs> ah, man, I don't know. I'm... I mean, I graduated from high school with a 1.7. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> you asked me a philosophical question and I barely got out of high school. And so decisions determine our destiny. Decisions determine our destiny. Decide about solid relationships. Decide about solid family relationships. Forgive people who have hurt you. Bless those people. Bless people all the time. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Everyone look right here. This is not about being a Protestant. This is not being about being a Catholic, an Episcopalian, a Presbyterian, a Methodist. Go down the list. If you have not come to the point in your life where you have realized that God loves you, you have sinned. The, the biblical word means you have missed the mark. You missed the target. All of us have missed the target. That God sent his son Jesus Christ so that the level ground is that the playing ground, the playing ground is all level. It's not, I'm better than you, or you're better than me, or I'm of this religion, or let's coexist, or let's do this. No, it, it's all, we stand there, all of us wrong before God. Well, man, that's, that's a hard word, Pastor. Well, then take it up with God. Because the Bible says in Romans 3.23, and this is only one verse out of many, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Don't you be mad at me for telling you and me that we're, we're all wrong before God. That's not my thought. But for those of us who have accepted Christ, it doesn't end there. The wages of sin, the payment for your sin and my sin is death. You can choose life or death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ,
today is the day for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've heard it. It's on you to make that decision today and allow God to begin a beautiful and wonderful work in your life. And then Joshua, before we take communion. Joshua chapter 24. You can put this in your smartphone. It's at the Version app. For those of you who are using a hard copy, I'm reading from the New American Standard. Those of you following online, you can pull your family Bible off the little coffee table right there. Go to your phone, whatever search engine you prefer. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. They're about to move into this land. One last speech. One last speech before they go into the big playoff game. One last speech as you're graduating from law school. One last speech as you have finally made it through kindergarten. One last speech. Here it is. Now, therefore, Joshua tells the people, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. Put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if there is any disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, you choose for yourself today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served or the where, where they were beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me in my house, he says, as for me in my relationships, as for me and my wife and my children and my uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and second cousins, we, he says, we will serve the Lord. And by the way, that's spoken by a man who dealt with, dealt with serious anxiety. That's spoken by a man who has some fear issues. Because if you go back to Joshua chapter 1, God calls him out and tells him over and over, Joshua, don't be afraid. Now look, if you're with a little child or a teenager or some adult and you sense that they're apprehensive, what do you tell them over and over again? Don't be afraid. You can do this. I'm afraid to go to bed at night time. Don't turn out the light. Don't be afraid. Oh, I just want somebody with me. Jesus is with you. Yeah, but I want somebody with skin. Jesus is here. Okay, he, don't, don't be afraid. And if you read in Joshua, over and over he's told, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And then here he is later saying, we're going into this land. And I've seen what God has been doing. I'm choosing to serve the Lord. And so our choices chart the course. Our decisions determine our destiny, and our choices chart the course. Billy Graham, a man who followed God for years and helped many people follow God, stayed true to his wife and to his family, said this some years ago. It's your decisions and not your circumstances that determine your destiny. It is your decisions and not your circumstances that determine your destiny. Some years ago, I was tweeting a whole lot about choices and decisions, so I went back and found this one. This is your destiny, your decisions. This is your destiny and my destiny our decisions. So when we come to communion, I just want to share with you when to be careful about decision making. And this actually comes from AA and NA, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. Halt. When you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely, and when you are tired, do not make big decisions, somewhat big decisions, or little decisions that, are, that can be life-changing. You be careful when you're hungry. What's the word we have invented? Hangry, all right? Uh, when, when you're angry, when you're lonely, when you're tired. And can I just say, that describes most of America today. Not just hungry for food, but hungry for meaning and purpose. 
So let's be careful. I needed to put that up for you because somebody in here needs that. You're about to make some kind of big decision in your marriage, in your life, in your career, and you're in one of these places, you need to be very cautious and careful, all right? Because our decisions will determine our destiny. And so before we take communion this morning, before we offer our lives afresh to God, when you and I are making decisions, may we seek to see that they are biblical, may they be prayerful, may they be full of wisdom, and then the last one I want to talk about a little bit. May they deal with the eternal. We've got to talk about this one before we take communion. Because as a pastor, church planter, youth minister, I do funerals. And I will hear from families about how awesome their loved one was, how they were a part of this club and this club and how they did good and did this and did that and we're over here and I, I, I'll hear all of this stuff. How they love to tell jokes, how they never missed a family reunion. I'll hear all this stuff. And I'm like, can somebody in your family tell me when they accepted Jesus? Can someone some sibling, uncle or aunt, a loved one, tell me, when did they accept Jesus? Because everything you told me about is dead. Just for saying that again. Everything you have told me about, as I've listened in your living room, is dead. When did they accept Jesus? As we take communion, and there's some communion in the back. There's one here. Deacons, would you help walk this through? If you need a cup, just kind of lift your hand. Just kind of gingerly, we'll get you a cup of bread and juice. We're going to have a deacon come and lead us through communion. Then we'll close with the song. If you've not accepted Jesus, as you're taking the cup, Receive Christ this morning. You don't have to be a member here to take communion with us, but you do need to be a follower of Christ according to the Bible. And so at this time, an active deacon, a man of God, is going to come share with us, and he'll lead us in communion. So if you'll take the cup, and I want to encourage you to open up the bread side first. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mike Shepard. I am one of the deacons here at Spring Hill. I welcome you this morning. And um, it's my pleasure and privilege to lead in our celebration of the Lord's Supper. As Steve said, there's a, a little uh, um, cracker guaranteed not to spoil your lunch in the bottom. Um, Communion is a time of contemplation, a time to stop and consider what was accomplished for us at the cross. And um, the night before he died, Christ took bread, he broke it and blessed it, gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it, passed it around, and said, drink this, all of you. This is uh, blood, um, new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Please stand at this time. And as we sing this song, if you don't know the words, if you don't know the song, 
Well, think about the decisions you need to make. And the number one decision is accepting Jesus Christ. Thank you for being a part of the uh, 9 a.m. in-person and online worship service. If you would like to connect with me, I'll be standing right here in this area afterwards. Maybe you need to visit with someone who's sitting next to you. If you have questions for us, we welcome those questions. You can QR code us right there with that QR code in your pew. You can send a text message to us. Uh, that number is 434 434-423-5300. We want to connect with you. We want you to know that you, you are valuable to God and you're valuable to us. Vacation Bible School is the number one thing we want you to be aware of. Please be praying about that, thinking about that. You can go online to our website. You can see the Vacation Bible School page. You can sign up right there to pray. You can sign up right there to serve. You can sign up your neighbor's children right there and register right there, okay? Father's Day is June the 18th. Mother's Day, we had a beautiful day, build a bouquet. That was a fantastic day. The deacons came alongside and helped. Small group people helped out. So, men, we're going to give you a gift. We're going to have some 
manually giveaways, okay, like an ironing board and that kind of stuff <laughs> for you. Hey, you want a strong marriage, you iron the clothes, okay? I'm just telling you how it is. Um, and so we're going to celebrate men and recognize men and how important men are in today's society. Yeah. And then hit the events page on our website. Go to the website. Hit events page. You'll be informed right there. You'll know how to pray. You'll know what to be a part of. Uh, you'll know how God can work in and through you to see um, people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, one more time, let's just uh, give a round of applause and a hoop and holler to the graduates. Some of them are watching online. <laughs> Exciting time. Uh, would you bow your heads for a brief word of prayer? Trust in the Lord with all of your hearts and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We pray these things very humbly, Lord, humbling ourselves before you. In the name of Christ, amen. Hope you have a great day.